with Superintendent Mr. Box and Assistant Superintendent Blaine Conley and Recording Secretary Jessica McFarland. Upcoming board meetings, we've got August 21st, uh, Budget Workshop Administration Office at 7 p.m. September 11th, 2017, regular meeting, Mentone Elementary at 7 p.m. October 9th, 2017, regular meeting, Mentone at 7 p.m. And November 13th, 2017, regular meeting at Mentone Elementary at 7 also. Spotlight on the Valley. Yes, thanks Todd. We have uh, three new employees here tonight we'd like to welcome and uh, hopefully you'll approve them here in just a little bit. But uh, I think we'll start over here to, to, to my left with Brian Raver. Brian is a new social studies teacher at the middle school. And uh, Brian, welcome. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm originally from the Macy, North Miami area. I graduated from there in 1995. I returned to college at IUK in 2012 to get my secondary ed degree. Finished that in 2016. And then I promptly moved to North Carolina and taught there for a year. And I moved back here about uh, two and a half, three weeks ago to take a position at Valley Middle School. And I'm happy to be back home. Yes. Welcome to back. Thank you. Are you working with seventh graders? Seventh grade, seventh social grade. studies, yep. Okay. Welcome. Glad you're here, Brian. Thank you. Cheryl Hop. Cheryl is uh, middle school science. Science teacher. Science. I'm eighth grade science and seventh grade advanced science. I'm from Napanee, Indiana. Uh, I've always taught down around this area, um, Caston, North Miami, Winnemac, and glad to be at Valley. Hope to stay here for a long time. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, sure. And Mr. Kindig, Nick Kindig. Nick is our new tennis coach this year, boys tennis coach. And uh, so how's it feel to be on the uh, coaching side of things now, Nick? I'm excited. We have our first match tomorrow. I think we're ready, so we're ready to get after it. Uh, you graduated from Bethel last year. Yep. What's, spring. Your, what's your degree in? Sports management. Okay. And what are you doing right now uh, besides coaching tennis? I'm just working part time, place where my dad works. So. Okay. Nice. Still looking for something sports management related. So. Sure. Well, welcome. We're glad to have you on board. I think that's everybody. Okay. Next, the uh, Tippecanoe Valley Distinguished Alumni. Yeah. Um, as you know, each year about this time, we recognize a uh, class of distinguished alumni. And this year we have eight uh, Valley grads that we'd like to recognize. Now these, these are people who, um, the definition is, uh, have led a successful life while making substantial contributions to their chosen field of work, or have provided outstanding service to their community, state, or country. Uh, we took uh, nominations last spring throughout the summer. I think we closed those May the 1st. These were the folks that were selected, and you can see that uh, there are six graduates from Tippecanoe Valley High School. Uh, Mike Biddle graduated in 1996, Craig Boyette in 1993, Jose Morado in 2009, Ashley Lindemeyer in 2004, Dan Tucker in 1991, and Teresa Petrosky Wallace in 1978. And then uh, in the past, we've called these legacy recipients, but we decided just to call them all Tippecanoe Valley alumni since uh, even though they graduated from a different high school, it's still part of the Valley District. Uh, we're going to recognize Wayne Cumberland this year, graduated in 1958 from Beaver Dam High School, and a fellow by the name of Rodney Williams that graduated from Pierre Mentone in 1972. Uh, we have a, a dinner plan to uh, honor them at the middle school on September the 7th at 6 30. Uh, we have a real nice meal. The, High school student council members uh, serve the food, the cafeteria staff prepares a really nice meal. And then after the meal, Rita inter inter uh, interviews each one of these people. And we've asked each one of them to identify an educator or educators that may have an impact on them. And we ask those people to come as well. So the educators usually will come up and talk a little bit too, and that, that's pretty good. It's very touching sometimes. So. That's coming up uh, the following day, September the 8th, and it's induction day. We get together early in the morning. We enjoy breakfast together. Um, these, in, the inductees then spend some time with the students. They actually make six different presentations throughout the day to groups of students. And uh, I find that uh, to be a very inspiring time because uh, you know, 
Now, these are folks just a few years ago were sitting where these kids are sitting right now. And it's a real opportunity for them to see that, you know, if the opportunities are there. If you work hard and take advantage of what's available for you at Tiffany Valley High School, you can do anything you want to do. Um, Jose Gerardo is working at ESPN right now. Uh, Ashley Lindemeyer is working for the FBI. So, you know, those are pretty high profile jobs. But we have others here that are, you know, everybody's exceptional in their own way. So those are a couple of fun days, and uh, we're really looking forward to it. Now, if you would like to go to the dinner, we are selling tickets right now. I think through the 23rd, selling tickets to that dinner. We'd like to sell them ahead of time so we know how many people are coming. And uh, it should be a couple of very enjoyable days, a couple of very inspiring days. I know our staff enjoys it, too. It's good to see these young people again and be able to connect with them after they've been going for a while. Okay, awesome. Any other? That's it for now. That's it. Good. We'll go on items from the visitors. Do we have anything from the visitors that we'd like to add? If not, we'll move on to approval of the consent agenda. Uh, number one, approve the minutes of the July 3rd, 2017 executive session. Number two, approve the minutes of the July 6th, 2017 executive session. Number three, approve the minutes of July 10th, 2017, regular meeting and executive session. Number four, approve the minutes of the August 2nd, 2017, executive session. Number five, approve the, the hiring of the following personnel. Doug Heinhold, PLTW teacher, Tippecanoe Valley High School. Brian Raber, social studies teacher for the middle school. Cheryl Huff, science teacher for the middle school. Martha Ruiz, Ruiz, custodian for the high school. Monica Fick, custodian for the high school. Anna Ritt Richardson, cook at the high school. Cassandra Jackson, instructional assistant at the middle school. And Frank Cam, bus driver for the school corporation. Number six, approve the following extracurricular assignments. Nick, Nick Kindig, boys tennis coach for the high school. Number seven, accept the resignation of the following personnel. Shana Crispin, instructional assistant at Mentone Elementary. Brittany Sheets, insist, instructional assistant at Mentone Elementary. Karen Foster, instructional assistant at Mentone Elementary. Martha Reed, instructional assistant at Mento Elementary. Keisha Clark, cook at Mento Elementary. Lauren Allen, instructional assistant at the middle school. Courtney Eaton, bus driver for the school corporation. Chris Fuller, study, social studies teacher for the middle school. Chris Fuller, assistant football coach for the middle school. Chris Fuller, seventh grade boys basketball coach for the middle school. Chris Fuller, again, assistant track coach for the middle school. And the last one is Ethan Brumball, football coach for the middle school. <coughs> Number eight, accept the retirement of the following personnel. Dawn Rowland, secretary for the school corporation administration office. Number nine, approve the 2017-18 teaching assignments. And number 10, approve the 2017-18 extracurricular assignments. <coughs> Is there anything, fellas, that you want to pull out and talk about? Or? I make a motion to accept this. Red talk. Okay, Stan makes a motion to accept as it's read. Do I have a second? Aaron seconds. All in favor by saying aye. Aye. No. It's passed. We'll go on to approval of claims and payroll. Okay. We have one pre written claim listing this evening. It's dated July 31 of 2017 in the amount of $769,366.50. The regular claim listing is dated August 14 of 2017 in the amount of 
$834.99. We have two payrolls this evening. The first is dated July 7 of 2017 the amount of $358,363.38. The second is dated July 21, 2017, in the amount of $336,941.86. excuse me, 86 cents. So I'm going to submit these claims to payroll for the group. Do we have any questions on the claims and payroll? Uh, do I have a motion to accept? Adam makes that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Brian seconds. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Seven. On to the financial report. Okay. You have the reconciled bank statement and monthly financial report of funds for the month of July 2017. Uh, in summary, our receipts and disbursements for July of 2017 are uh, total receipts for all funds $1,430,000. $84.88. The total disbursements for all funds, $1,583,128.36. Okay. On to old business. Update on the Akron Elementary School project. We have Derek Anderson from Skillman here with us tonight. Derek, welcome. Hey, thank you. It's What's going on you. Akron? Well, we had a busy last uh, two or three weeks, I would say, before school started. <laughs> But uh, things came together, um, not 100%, but you guys had school, we passed all our local inspections, state inspections. Uh, it was a big push to get it done, but you guys worked hard, worked Saturdays. A lot of help from the staff and Chrissy, um, their patience. Things kind of came together good enough for, well, good as they could have come together. Um, so I hear, so we got the new additions turned over for the classrooms, cafeteria, kitchen area. We got all the kitchen <coughs> We're going to leave that floor out for the cafeterias until Christmas break. Um, there's a the way that we do it, the locker room addition and that whole front entryway ties together. It was a little difficult to face that. We're trying to keep it dry. So every once in a while, we get a little water in there. So we didn't want to put that floor down in the room. Same thing with the gym. We left that out. We're still, we just started working on that locker room. Uh, they poured the floor last Friday, so now they're starting with the masonry. Uh, should have another crew, bigger crew out there the rest of the week. Probably right, taking about two or three weeks to get the roof on. And that way, that'll allow us to get that parking area in that spot. Right now, it's just stone, so there's some overflow in there for teachers and staff to park there. So by the end of October, that whole parking area should be paved for the school and staff. We'll still take up some of it, but it will be a lot less of our end, but a lot more for you guys to utilize that space. Um, okay, we got area A, I'll call the existing building that was left from all the demolition. We're just we're working on that phase. Uh, we anticipate turning that part over the first chunk, October, fall break. So that way some more maneuvering will take place, more teachers will get into their new space. We have another bank of classrooms and areas that we'll finish up in the Christmas break. So the total project will be done right around Christmas break. We'll still have a few odds and ends working on punch list and doing certain things um, as we get going. Uh, a couple other things to make you aware of that's out there that we're investigating and working on getting some pricing on is there's those two, I call them four restrooms, two smaller sections. Um, that old, the piping in there is pretty old, it's all galvanized pipe. So we're investigating a couple options for pricing, either converting that into one bigger main restroom, and getting rid of the four restrooms, and then replacing all that piping. So you have a new pipe in those areas. So it'll be a little demolition, knocking down some walls, and then probably converting it into more of an ADA accessible space as well. So that's one item that's out there. Um, another thing that just came up, to start working on that detention pond area. Uh, they're going to start that towards the end of this week. It'll probably take them two or three weeks to get that recreated the topsoil and put the riprap and the big rocks down in there in the fabric. So that'll be going on here in the next few weeks. Uh, playground, that's going to probably be towards the end of September. Uh, that'll be in conjunction with the parking areas and the uh, detention pond. 
So our portion will be ready probably mid-September, and it'll take a couple weeks for the new playground to be installed. So we're looking, hopefully they get to use it before it's too cold outside, but we'll be close. Uh, last item we're looking at is there's some existing sidewalk on the south end that wasn't called for to be removed. So we're getting a couple pricing for uh, to get that in place. So you have brand new concrete everywhere. This looks, you know, you spent all this money and then you got one section of old concrete left. It's like, why didn't they fix that? So we're looking into that and get some quotes on that. And that sh we should have those here in the next week or so. And then we'll get with Mr. Boggs and you guys make a decision on whether or not to do that. Um, like I said, a lot went on in the last few weeks. Guys are kind of getting back to acclimated, getting the locker room. We're probably anticipating the gym floor. You know, you can see the picture. There's some pictures of the reception desk that uh, Pike Lumber donated, I believe. Wow. Probably the nicest area I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and I was late into the game, so I didn't know. And I'm walking up, and holy cow, it's, you know, that was a lot of money. Then I come to find out that he was nice enough and generous enough to donate. So that was. That's real nice. You won't find one of those many schools. Uh, what else you got there? Oh, this is a typical classroom. Um, you see the smart, the smart TV, touch screen TV there, smart boards on each end. Uh, new furniture in all the classrooms. And I think, I haven't heard, but I'm assuming the teachers are happy with what they have. That's actually that classroom, that's old furniture. Yeah, that's it. Uh, that's is. That's a fourth grade, that's a new classroom, but with a fourth grade having to take that until they get their new classroom. So we have the older furniture in there for them. There's some neighbor. There's a little break area in the hallway. That little yellow spots, the skylight, that lets natural light in there. Uh, those are some coat hooks in the hallways for the kids to hang their coats on. That's all the way to the cafeteria, right? Yes. And then we have some more down by the outside door where they're coming in from the buses, too. There's the kitchen. Pretty big, good-sized kitchen. There's the cafeteria. Um, you see the door up there on the top left? That's an operable wall that divides the cafeteria to the stage. And there's also another one on the other side, so you can have that side open. It opens up to the gym. So you have multiple. You have a lot of flexibility in that space and how you guys want to use it. But you can see on the far back, there's a temporary wall back there. That's where the new addition that we're working on starts. The locker room, the main entryway will be back there. So the health department blessed us. Everything was good. She was happy. There's some uh, site concrete out back on the east end. That's your chiller and transformers in that little fenced in area. Just closer to us, just through the dumpster. New parking area, we had to do some modifications there to kind of incorporate that tree, the mighty oak, so we didn't damage the root systems. So we kind of, architect came up with some revisions, talking with Mr. Boggs and uh, the arborist that came out. So we made some modifications, hopefully everything goes well and the tree stays alive. That's part of the locker room addition right there. So that's the main entryway. It's going to be the main entryway. That floor is all poured right now. Um, Masonry block walls are going up around the perimeter. This is the area back here where the bus is parked, right, Christy? And the yes. children come and go through mm -hmm. those doors. We'll, we'll end up doing our staging in the gym in the morning and at night so they're away from the <coughs> Yeah, we've got a few more months of. I've seen construction you guys for the next part of the site work and then a little bit longer once we finish up with the existing classrooms. We're still tracking everything should be finished up by the end of the year. Any questions? Do you guys build the, the uh, playground equipment or someone else does? We'll get it ready. And I think there's an outside of this firm so that... I think the vendor installs it on the There's soft surface there, mm -hmm. and they'll, they'll do that as well. So we'll get it boxed in, stoned down, ready for the playground equipment. Awesome. We, I think this week they're putting in basketball hoops, though, out there, okay. is what I was told last week. So we'll get some hoops out there. And the, the
the backstops for the um, home plate is the baseball fields mm -hmm. on two in two sides were put up last week. So Can you get from the blacktop now out to that grassy play area. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, it stops. We still have to walk. There's a little, a little bit of gravel. Of, uh, yeah, left that they'll clean up and stuff. So. Kids can get out there. Mm -hmm. They can get out there. Sounds like we're just in time with your members. Yes. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Yeah, it's been amazing, actually. That's great. Mm -hmm. And I think down the road we're going to start talking about dedication. I think we're looking, I thought we were going to wait until maybe sometime in the spring. Once we're done, let the weather warm up a little bit. Maybe right before spring break or right after. That's my thoughts. I mean, it's kind of up to you guys if you want to do it. So make sure we schedule it when we're done. Yeah. So, yeah, you want to do it. Yeah. everything you finished. Yeah. You have a finished product. All right. So, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, you guys have a good rest of the evening. Thank you. Thank you. See you around. Thank you. Yep. See you. Bye. Okay. I'm going to move to approval of addition and revisions to the school board policy. If you remember last month, I brought several uh, policies to you. Some were new, some were revisions. Uh, there was one about teacher appreciation grants. Uh, that was uh, in addition to school board policy. There was uh, another one about criminal history check policy, which was a revision to our current policy. We also talked about uh, a new policy that about reporting abuse or neglect to the Department of Child Services, how that was changed, the law changed there. So we've uh, developed a policy for that. And then there were a couple, um, we needed to change our non-resident student transfer policy in our school age uh, child care program, reasonable care standards policies again because of school law. So we did that. Um, you have those there in front of you. Questions about any of those? I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the attached additions and revisions to the school board policy. All right, makes that motion. Do I have a second? Stay in seconds. All in favor by saying aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Okay, any other? That's it. That's what we're do. All right, on to new business. Well, I've asked uh, Mr. Cooper, who is our middle school athletic director, to come and uh, present tonight about uh, the request to um, have approved a co-ed middle school soccer program. So, Mr. Cooper. Um, <clears throat> since we've added the high school program, um, we've worked really hard in the last couple of years with our RC uh, uh, committee of other schools that we work with to try to figure out a good uh, whether it's going to be spring or fall, or I'll be trying to get a middle school soccer program going for different schools. Um, finally, after a couple months ago, we came to a decision that spring would be the best time. Um, five of the schools then decided to contract with each other uh, with home and away games. Um, we could possibly have 10 games. And uh, it would be a six through eight co ed middle school team. And if you notice the attached schedule, um, and basically, the, the cost of the analysis of that was around $2,800 in the budget from the middle school. Um, we'd be able to take care uh, of that portion and make sure we have all of the needs to start that program. Um, just doing a quick um, survey of students last week, again, just to make sure interest-wise, um, there was over 35 kids that signed the list saying that they wanted to play and wanted to know when it was starting already wanted to start getting physicals over, so I thought that was pretty good. Um, see it as a, a successful um, program if we do do it, and uh, if you have any questions, questions for me on our tables. Corey, you, you said sixth grade. I think I read somewhere that fifth graders can play as well. Fifth grade can play if numbers are needed, just like we do in golf and wrestling. Um, if we have spots available, we would accept fifth graders. That. I know I was talking with some individuals that um, I think from Fulton County and said we have at least two teams um, that work basically playing over in Rochester and Fulton County leagues. 
And so a lot of parents are pretty excited the fact that we can have this program available for students. So what kind of numbers are you taking? Um, I outlined uh, 20 uniforms and supplies for that. I talked to Mr. Rackets, he said if we had enough um, uh, interest that we could arrange to do more than that if necessary. Because how many is on the team? I mean, how many play at a time? Eight? Eleven that play at a time. Eleven? And so we can work it out more game-wise since it's on the way. I'm sure if we need to be able to play more kids, we will be able to do You said there were five conference schools? Yes. Well, what about the other, aren't there, how many are there, ten? Yeah. The other, the, other, the other schools are trying to work out. They may have a team, but it may not be under their school at this point, and they're working on trying to figure out how to get that to happen. Um, you only have to have five teams to have a, a, a what we call a championship or a playoff type scenario, so they already meet that standard for the uh, conference. Um, so after a year, they would probably set that up. It's a good deal. It's good. Yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah. <coughs> motion to go ahead and approve the go ahead middle school soccer program. I'll make that motion. Adam that. makes that motion. Do I have a second? Second. Aaron seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for putting in the time on that. I know that takes a lot of work to put that stuff together. Well, it'll definitely help your program, Mark. Well, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. Go. All right, number two, approved ECHO grant to robotics at Dentone and Akron Elementary Schools. We were uh, recently notified that the ECHO Foundation awarded a grant of $8,212 to robotics at Dentone and Akron Elementary Schools. Uh, Mr. Doms tells me that, uh, and Mr. Doms was the one that wrote the grant application, that a portion of that grant funding is going to be used to fund a stipend for the newly established position of robotics sponsor at each elementary school. And then the remainder of the funding will be split between the two schools to purchase equipment. So this is just another step uh, toward getting robotics going in both elementary schools and strengthening our, our STEM issues. Awesome. I have a motion to accept the DECO grant to uh, ro uh, robotics at Mendo Nacron Elementary School. Aaron makes that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Brian seconds. All in favor by saying aye. Aye. The ayes have it. On to number three. Yeah, I want to uh, give the board an update on student enrollment. Uh, we took enrollment figures the first day of school, which was a week ago today, and then enrollment figures again today. And uh, the enrollment at Akron Elementary is 382 students, and that's uh, up 26 students from where Mrs. Mills was last in February. Uh, Mentone, our number is uh, 431. That's down 16 from uh, February. The middle school is 426. That's down 11 from the last February. And then the high school is at 584, which is up 9 from last February. So if you put those numbers together, that's 1,823 students. And that is a uh, gain of 8 students from our official count last February. So uh, very encouraged by that. Uh, we've seen some declining numbers in enrollment the last few years. It looks good. like so we're back on the way in the right direction. So I think there's a lot of reasons for that, but I uh, want to stand right back there. Mr. Lee has done a great job of getting the good word out about what's going on here in Tempe Valley, and I think people are beginning to notice that. It's, good. it's awesome. I did want to share with you also that uh, we keep pretty close tabs on the number of non-resident transfer students, and we have this year 120 students coming to Tippecanoe Valley that live outside of our district. And I think uh, that number says a lot for, again, what we're doing here, that people recognize uh, that there are good things going on in Tippecanoe Valley that want their kids to be part of that. So, uh, 120 students, I believe that's the most we've had uh, in the years that we've monitored. Do you know how many transferred out? I mean, I know that's you know, Brian, that, tougher to do. It is, that's a number that we've really never been able to get a handle on because some districts will share that information with get a pretty good idea of how many we have coming in because there's an approval process, but it's real hard to get a handle on that as far as it is And we try to call administrators to see where they went, and if they moved, it gives us a little clue. 
you know, that I have asked our, our folks that uh, when, do, when people do move or when they leave, just try to find out why. And uh, it very, very seldom is because they're not happy here. It's usually because maybe they're living with one parent here, and the other parent lives out of the district. Um, just a variety of, a lot of moving. Adjourn. We've got our student representatives with us tonight. We've got a new one, Bryce Madefer and Cheyenne Oldfather. What's happening so far at the high school? Well, we have lots of new things going on. We've got a new principal, Mr. Kreif. Um, from what I've heard so far and what I've experienced, Mr. Kreif is a wonderful person. Um, he's very involved with the students. He's always visible in the hallways and uh, in the classrooms, always asking about sports and stuff. So he's a very uh, involved guy. Um, and he also, something cool that he does, he always plays music over the intercoms for the students and stuff. Uh, awesome. It's kind of a relaxing, you know, music, time of the day. Also, we've got new computers, the Dell laptops that we've uh, just got this year. Uh, they've been running a lot more smoothly than the Acers. Those were kind of a mess, but um, these are a lot better and all the students like them and stuff. So. Um, we've been using OneNote instead of like Chalkable and stuff, and those it's honest it's kind of confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it, it works a lot better for all the students. Um, also, seniors right now we're all kind of scrambled because we're all getting scholarship opportunities and stuff, and searching for college and other plans for our future. So it's kind of an exciting yet scary time for all of us. But yeah, the lovely scholarships are due. September 1st. Yeah, they're early in the year. Yeah, right? yeah. So we're all trying to hurry and get those in. <laughs> but, yep, so it's exciting, but scary. <laughs> so hand over to Bryce. Um, right now at the high school, we got uh, quite a few sports going on as of football, volleyball, girls' golf, boys' tennis, cross country, and soccer. Um, the volleyball scrimmage against Knox, we did good. And the football scrimmage against Warsaw, we did really good at that. Um, football has a game against Bremen Friday, that's away, and volleyball has a game against West Noble Thursday, which will be at home. Um, we Right now we're doing math and English remediation for SRT and BS, which are helping kids with I-STEP um, and helping them work in those areas. And hopefully um, retakes are in December and in May, and hopefully we'll have kids pass and move on. Much. Well, if there's nothing else, we are adjourned for this evening. Thanks for coming. Good morning.